Warning, cheaters may contain adult themes and strong language. Parents are cautioned that this program may not be suitable for children. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. Are you ready to go? Sure. Desiree, can you nah. tell him why you've been lying to him? You're a loser. That's why she blew nah, you nah, off. No, nah, no, nah. You had to bring the whole world into this? What's this? It's supposed to be at your mother's house, and you come out with my boss. From Cheater's surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. It's just like you're just trying to keep a big secret from me. I just can't go on anymore. I need to know the truth. I don't like being the one that has to show you this. Oh. I asked her about his, and she said nothing was going on. Do you want to confront him? Oh, yeah. Hey, me there. Yeah, I got him. Hey, go. Go. Get up, get up. Get up. Go, go ahead. I love you. I'm sorry. Real reality television is brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Hello, I'm Joey Greco. Welcome to this installment of Cheaters. Meet Matthew Talamini, an earnest young man wanting to discuss some concerns about his girlfriend. With an honest desire to uncover the truth, Matthew puts his trust in the detectives at Cheaters. Matthew Talamini, age 23, a carpenter concerned that his longtime girlfriend may be deceiving him. Desiree and I met at a friend's house. It was a party one night. I went over there, and that was the first night I ever met her. She walked in. I just thought she was drop dead gorgeous, and we just started talking and hit it off from there. One night I went out drinking with some of my friends, and I cheated on her one night with one of my old girlfriends. And she found out, and she got really mad and wouldn't speak to me no more, and just sort of ended abruptly. This is the second time, second go around, and everything's worked out great. We started living together after th two, three months, and everything's it's going better than I expected this time. A few weeks ago, she came home, and she only had one sock on, and. I wasn't too sure about that. That sort of startled me. And she didn't say nothing. She just came in real quick and slipped onto some sandals and tried to sneak by and act like unnoticeable. And I didn't say anything, but if you're out in the day, how are you going to lose one sock? I loved more than anything, and I, I have a stronger love for her than any other girl I've ever been with, ever. So I really wouldn't want her to leave, I'd try to salvage the relationship the best I could. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Desiree Gomez, age 21, a daycare worker who may be giving in to the temptation of duplicity. Investigation day three. Cheater sets up a stakeout at the suspect's workplace. After waiting around for signs of movement, suspect Desiree Gomez finally comes out of the daycare center and jumps into a sky blue Cadillac, which her boyfriend thoughtfully loaned her. Gomez surprises Cheater's detectives by recklessly speeding through a school zone. After a short drive, suspect Gomez makes a quick turn into a local car wash. It appears this may be a secret meeting place for her and an unknown gentleman. Suspect Gomez walks toward a stocky man and proceeds to jump into his awaiting arms. Investigators realize that this case may be taking a turn for the worse as the two give each other a nice long hug. Mindless of the possible consequences, she helps her new love interest polish up his big beautiful truck. The man playfully snaps her on the rear end with a towel. Suspect Gamez seems to like a man who can take charge. She moves in for another loving kiss from the burly fellow. In a feeble attempt to show her how strong he is, the fellow lifts his sweetheart off her feet, but is only able to hold her for a second or two. 
Unimpressed by his apparent lack of vitality, suspect Gomez gives a quick peck on the lips and heads back to complain at Talamini's car. Cheaters tries to keep up with the suspect, but finds her erratic driving to be too dangerous and cuts off its pursuit for the time being. Investigation day four. Suspect Gomez is again at the daycare center, and inspectors wait to see what surprises are in store. Just after midday, Cheaters notices a familiar-looking pickup driving toward the suspect's place of employment. The man in the vehicle has now been identified as Brian Elston, complainant Talamini's employer. After dispensing with the pleasantries, the pair gets into the truck and takes off. Investigators take note that suspect Gomez is sitting precariously close to companion Elston. Cheaters follows the couple to a nearby restaurant and bar. They appear to be quite comfortable with each other as they playfully hold hands while waltzing into the eatery. After giving each other some food and affection, the two part ways. Cheater sets off to prepare for further inquiries. Investigation Day 10. After being flustered for a few days, Cheaters learns through complaint of Talamini that he has again loaned his vehicle to his girlfriend. Cheaters quickly proceeds to her place of employment and shortly afterwards, suspect Gomez walks out and hops into Matthew's Cadillac. Cheaters follows her to the parking lot of a local beauty salon, where she swaggers inside for an afternoon of pampering. After an hour or so, investigators notice companion Elston's truck turning into the parking lot. He walks toward the salon to greet his newly dolled up girlfriend at the door. Matthew, in the meantime, is played for a fool in a recorded phone conversation. Hello. Where were you at lunchtime today? I was here for a little bit and then I left. Why? Well, what were you doing? Nothing, Matthew. Why are you hounding me? Because you're never where you're supposed to be when you tell me. No, I'm here. I'm always busy. I take a message or you can call me back. Are you trying to accuse me of something? No, no, I'm just wondering what's going on. Well, if you're trying to accuse me of anything, you have proof first, all right? All right. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Cheaters realizes that the moment of truth is at hand and calls Matthew to tell him the discouraging news. Coming up, the confrontation. Now that Matthew's suspicions about Desiree are confirmed, Cheaters plans a meeting to let him know what's really going on. Matthew courageously comes forward to discover the details behind his troubled relationship. Matthew, thanks for meeting us today. I know you've kind of taken off work a little bit. You had some questions about your relationship that you wanted to get some answers to. Since the last time you spoke with us, has your relationship changed at all? Oh, no, it hasn't changed any since the last time I spoke with y'all. So the situation continues to get worse. Yeah, I put a rose under the windshield of her car one time, and she came home, she didn't say anything. And I sort of brought up the car, and she just was like, what's wrong with the car or whatever. And it either someone walked by, took it, or she thinks another man put it there, and she was trying to hide it from me. Matthew, our detectives have some information regarding your situation that we wanted you to have a look at. OK. On the first day of investigation, we identified your girlfriend leaving her place of work. The detective followed her, and we noticed that she stopped off at a car wash didn't pull into a bay, but we see her walk up to a man. That's my boss. And that's your boss. And now we get a better idea of how she's been carrying on during the day. Because on this day, we see your boss pick up your girlfriend. As they go in and sit down, they start feeding one another. And this looks like they're dating. And what bothers me is these are two people that know you, that you trust. Now, on this day of the investigation, she was followed to a local hair salon. But he shows up again. So while you're working, they were followed to a park. And we see him out in the park, just as if she was planning a future with him. Where did she tell you she was going to be today? She said she's going over to her mom's. She's not at her mom's. They've met again. Would you like to confront her? 
Yeah, okay. Put an end to this. They're in a park right now. Are you ready to go? Sure. All right, let's get you over here. Now, what's your boss's name? Brian. Brian. Is he dating someone? I, I think he is. Yeah, I thought he was. I mean, I nev I've never uh -huh. met her or anything, but I don't know. She's talking about my girl. And I don't yeah. Know. Be careful. Take your time. Take your time. Take your time. What do you? Stay there, Matthew. Stay there, Matthew. Sorry. Desiree, I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. Matthew. Well, we know you. What the hell are you doing? Which is where Wait, she what? told him she was going to be today. But you know that, what? boss. No, 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 no. Can you no. tell him why you've been lying to him? He, he never home during lunch. No, yeah, no, he takes me to work, and then you go out and go, go with him during the day. You know what, Matthew, I'm not going to talk to you about this, and you need to stay out of it. It's none of your business. What? No, no. We're, it is our business, and we yeah. aren't in it, and we're yeah. not getting... Loser, that's why she blew no, you no, off. No, no, what? no. What loser, is this man? about? There's no... You're his boss. Yeah, you he take me to work, you. and you this go out with my girl friend. during lunch? Because you can't take care what? of your... Oh, girl. man, what? I can take care of my girl. What? You're doing this. You have to bring the whole world into this? Now, what's no. this? Yeah. Why can't you just tell him that you weren't happy if you weren't happy? And I'm out of here. If you well, want to talk about it, you never come this, home at the right time. You can talk about it at home. Hey! No. You don't you talk about it at home. We can Desiree. talk about this at home. Desiree, you think he's going to go back home with you? That's his home. You think you've got Why a place to go? I need to get those cameras out of my face. Desiree, you've got a place to go. If that's what you want to talk about, we'll talk about it at home. Oh, and, and what's this? I'll get my purse. Is nice. All of them fell out. What, what is, is this? this? It's for the kids at the daycare, Matthew. Oh, why don't you pick them up? You're the ones causing this. Coming up, the conclusion. What is this? It's for the kids at the daycare, Matthew. Oh, why don't you pick them up? You're the ones causing this. Yeah, Matthew. Oh, we cause this? No, you can Come do on, it. Everybody can help. No, so, Matthew, help me. I'm not helping you, you nothing. You've been friend. running around You're all me. day. You're supposed to be at your mother's house. And you come out with my boss and run out to the park and. Matthew, let's talk about it at home. We'll go home and we'll talk about it and work something out. Look at that. You know me? Well, you're on him. You want to do something about it? Okay, Matthew, let's just go home. Let's just go talk about this at home. That's just it. No. Go. I don't even care anymore. No, no okay. this. Do you go. do this to all your employees, girl? How big is your, how big's your crew? Take it with you. I don't want to do it this right now. Matthew, I want them. I bought this, please. I bought no. this for you. Matthew, take your birds and go. Brian, take them, oh. please. Just get out, get them out of here. Matthew, let's go home and talk about this, please. I'm asking you nicely. Fine, we'll talk about it at home if you're lucky. Let's talk about it at what, home. Now Oh, it doesn't feel. It doesn't feel so good, does it? Let's just talk about this at home, okay? Okay, fine. Please, we'll talk about. It. I just don't want you to touch me right now. I don't want to talk about this with nobody else but Matthew. Nobody okay. else but Matthew. Don't. You Why? Because what you feel bad for what you've done? I mean, what you've run around and done all this. And, and, Matthew, what? I'm not going to talk stupid, about this with nobody you? but you. Feel don't you? You feel dumb. Whose truck is it? My son has to use the bathroom. Y'all need to move, y'all. Let's go well, home he and can... talk about Coach. it. Come on. Is this your truck? Oh, we'll take care of it. Can oh, we get this truck? Joey Greco with Cheaters. Let's okay. just go home and we'll talk about this alone, please. That's fine. All right, let's go. All right. Let's get in the car and let's go. Fine, get in. I'll stand in the middle if you won't hit me. You promise you won't hit me? Oh, yeah, I will. OK, I don't know. <laughs> if you want me to leave from there, then I will. Let's just talk about it at home. All right. Let's just talk about it at home. If you want me to leave from there, then I will. I see this videotape with y'all going to, and then y'all at the park right now, and you lie and say, so I'm going somewhere else, and it's nothing adds up, and you're just, you're just full. Basically what it is. We can discuss everything at the house. Oh. I'm not going to, nothing else. It's it. It's over. After the confrontation, Matthew says he'll have to weigh all of the facts before making any final decisions. At the end of the show, Cheaters divulges what those decisions are. But now, Cheaters talks with Christy Adams, previously caught on the show with a secret lover. 
Christy comes to Cheaters to express her disappointment with the occurrence. Christy Adams, age 22. Christy talks with Cheaters to vent her indignation. When I uh, first saw the crew, it was like overwhelming. There was a lot of people. It was invading my privacy. I was really pissed off about the whole thing. He didn't have to do it like that. It was stupid. He took it all out of proportion over something stupid. He knew in his heart I didn't want to be with him. I've seen y'all at the park, leaving the mall whenever I pulled okay, up. Okay, then why do you even have these people follow me? You can come out and ask me. What are we out here? Joey! Josh! Get security. Come on, guys. This is Leroy. My girl. It's not the license. Tell you what? broke my girl. You the first light. What do you want me to do? Take it to Greta and not about you? I got a baby in the car. Y'all don't need to be doing this. I can't believe people get paid to run around and run relationships. They have no business. They would have came out eventually and stalked people and everything without their permission. It was it's a horrible event. Y'all are, are people who have no morals to run other people's lives when y'all have nothing to do with it. Y'all are in their life instigating stuff, and it's none of your business. You don't know the people. Y'all have nothing to do with them, yet y'all want to run things, and it's not okay. But whenever I did, I what? helped you. Whenever what? you needed a place oh. to stay, I helped you out. Oh, yeah, after you what, did nothing but lay up in bed and nothing but sleep on. Hey, but and whenever you needed a place to stay, I helped you. Some people just said, oh, that's. You want to talk about? Oh, that's yeah. not good. That's not good. What about the. And he's supposed to be gay. No, well, the whole thing. It was more, I mean, it was a hassle for to have to put up with all those people and then I had to come back in here to justify myself because y'all made me look pretty bad when y'all didn't know the story. Y'all made me look like a scandalous straight up. So it made me look bad, but I had to come here and justify myself. And I mean, it was, y'all people are rude, y'all get to the point. And your cameraman, your host, Joey, I think he's gay. I really do. I think he's gay. I think my ex-boyfriend and Joey could be happy together. They could just go at it and just be happy. And y'all could footage that. Joey, can your little friend take Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Maybe he can kiss you. Maybe, you know what? He can... Maybe he can sleep with you. Guess what? You know, you see, that's... This is what we're trying to do is resolve conflict. You know what? Obviously... You have nothing better right, to do. Okay. Let's yell. People. Let's everybody yell. You know what? Let's you yell. I don't think I'd like that. I mean, I really don't have to explain myself because I don't think I did wrong. I only did to them what they did to me. So, I mean, I don't feel guilty about it. I don't feel bad about it. They'll get over it. I mean, I ain't going to sit here and apologize and lie about it. So, I mean, I'm just going to be honest and go on with life. Now that the confrontation is in the history books, Matthew Talamini looks forward to working out all of his problems with Desiree Gomez. He says that he's the victim of bad karma and is learning a valuable lesson from the entire incident. Although hurt by the actions of his girlfriend, Matthew affirms that he's open to forgiveness and doesn't blame Ms. Gomez for getting back at him. Nonetheless, he believes that they both need the help of an esteemed therapist if any reconciliation is to take place. Desiree Gomez places full blame on herself and says that stupidity is the culprit of her actions. She states that Matthew has been very patient with her while she's going through what she calls a mentally challenging period of her life. Ms. Gomez gave an indication that she wants her life with Matthew to be normal and is ready to take whatever steps necessary to achieve that goal. She hopes that a combination of therapy and medication will be beneficial to her mental status. Ms. Gomez says that she's ready to move on with Matthew and is looking forward to a prosperous future with him. As for Brian Elston, he maintains that Ms. Gomez relentlessly pursued him and never had anything positive to say about Matthew Talamini. He claims that she is to blame for the affair. I am a man, he replied, and she took it upon herself to seduce me. He states that Matthew can keep his job, but only if he agrees to forget about the incident and stick to his professional responsibilities.